<coughs> omega over k, that's the phase speed, the omega by dk, the group speed. The thing is that they're not necessarily the same for all values of k. Right? That's where it gets interesting. If the phase speed or the group speed varies depending on the scale of the wave, the wavelength, then you have some complex, interesting behavior. Right? And that's what we're going to study. So it's possible, if, if this is true, if the, this speed depends on the scale, right? that means that some, some wavelengths might go faster than others, basically. So you might have, for example, short waves that go slow, long waves that go fast. Right? Well, what, what would happen if, if, that, if, if that was the case? You start off with something which is a mixture of short waves and long waves, and then the, uh, the long waves all take off quite fast, and the short waves go slowly. So that's, that is what we observe in, in out at sea. Um, imagine you're on a boat out at sea, and at some distance from you there is some kind of disturbance, some kind of storm, which will generate waves. And you're here on your boat, right? And the waves are going to come to you. The first thing that happens is you, you have this swell, right? Not a very comfortable feeling. You might get sick, right? It's the slow swell. And then the next day, you see the surface of the sea all choppy and perturbed because the short waves have finally arrived. The long waves are gone, the short waves are arriving. Because the, the long waves go faster than the short waves. That is dispersion, okay? Um, so, and, and if, if, on the other hand, you have a system where the short waves and the long waves go at the same speed, then, well, what is it? It's, uh, it's the omega by dk equals omega over k. You have a linear relationship between omega and k, right? So, in that case, everything collapses. You have um, a, a phase speed which is equal to the group speed, which is independent of frequency and wavelength. Right? Now that system there is called non-dispersive. So when, if you have a dispersion relation which is linear, then that can be um, described as non-dispersive. Linear and passes through the origin. Right? That can be described as non-dispersive. Non-dispersive, all wavelengths go the same speed, all frequencies go the same speed, and the phase speed is the same as the group speed. Right? That's, that's your non-dispersive wave. Right, so here's a, a diagram, which is called a dispersion diagram. So if we know what our physical system is, we can imagine that we can work out the relationship between omega and k, between the frequency and the wave number. Right? And so we have a few different cases here. We have non-dispersive, so that's just a straight line. It's linear. So then you can see that the um, if k is very small, all right. So I forgot to use the pointer. Yeah. If k is very small, um, that's long waves, right? And those long waves are going at this speed. Um, here's a difference in omega. Here's an omega, a value of omega divided by the value of k you get this, this gradient here, right? And if k is bigger, that's short waves, okay? Same gradient, omega over k, same value, right? So the, the slope of this curve is constant. So, and the, 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 if you divide omega by k, you'll always get the same value, and it'll be equal to the slope of this curve, which is also equal to the group speed. D omega by dk is the slope of this curve. Right? If you have a dispersive um, wave, but well, let's let's do that on the blackboard. Okay, let's just draw a dispersion diagram for um, deep water. Okay, so here we have omega against k, right? and we'll, we'll draw a dispersion curve like that. Right? So. As I said, if, if k is small, then k is 2 pi over lambda, right? 2 pi over the wavelength. So if k is small, 
lambda is big, so these are long waves, okay? Long waves. And if k is big, then we have short waves. Right? And so, we're, what we're looking for is the value of omega over k. That's the phase thing, right? So, we can take a value of omega here and divide it by a value of k, and it is the gradient of that triangle. Okay, and then, so that's for long waves, it'll be that gradient there. How about for short waves? Well, we can do the same thing. It's this triangle here. Whoops. All right, so it's the slope of that sector there, which will give you the phase speed. So you can see the phase speed is changing. Now, as the waves get shorter, it's getting, this slope is getting less, right? So the phase speed is decreasing with k. The short waves are slower than the long waves, right? How about the group speed? What, what is the group speed going to give us in this situation? Well, the group speed is the tangent to this curve. So the group speed, you can write as Cg equals d omega by dk. So we want to draw the tangent here. Okay, that will give us CG. Right. And so for the long waves, the group speed is, is this. For the short waves, it will be the tangent here, at this point here. Okay. So what can we say about the group speed? Well, we can say that it's less than the phase speed, right? Which is what we saw, which is what I said before, right? I said, um, I said that the, the modulation packet is slower than the individual wave crests that travel through it. So the modulation packet goes slower than the waves themselves. The group speed is slower than the phase speed. And it's also a function of wavelength, okay? So, again, for group speed, the modulation packets associated with short waves are slower than long waves. Um, so that's what you call normal dispersion. And in fact, for um, deep water waves, the group speed is half of the phase speed. There's another kind of dispersion here where the group speed is bigger than the phase speed, so the packets actually go faster than the individual waves. It's quite unusual. Uh, capillary waves, the tiny little ripples that you see on the surface of the water, behave like that. But we're not going to deal with those. For them, the restoring force is surface tension. But that's a bit outside our scope of interest for this course. Um, so, yeah, let's finish with one little exercise here. An exercise for you. Um, I'm just going to draw something on the blackboard here and ask you if you can think about how it's going to propagate downstream. Right. So imagine we're in deep water. All right. can, uh, can carry on. All right. yeah, well, yeah, I might not use it, but you can carry on. Uh, so, here's a, here's a pattern, right? And I'm just going to draw a pattern. It's going to look a bit strange. See if you can figure out what I'm up to here. So, let's say that that pattern, that's our initial pattern. And it's going to propagate downstream, right? In deep water. So, it's going to propagate this way. Who wants to come and draw what it's going to look like later as it goes when it's downstream? Anybody got an idea? Don't be afraid of the camera. I'll just edit it out. Don't worry. Just leave it running. So what we've got here is a combination of a, of a slow signal and a fast signal. So the idea is that the slow signal will go faster, and so it will be separated like this, and the faster signal will trail along behind so it'll end up looking like that. So that's a kind of idealized um, invention 
but it illustrates this phenomenon of dispersion. Right? A dispersion is when you have a complex pattern which is made up of different wavelengths, and then as it propagates, they get dispersed, they get separated. Right? So the long wave gets separated from the short wave, that's dispersion. And the advantage of having a system that's non-dispersive, because so we will study in this course some waves which are non-dispersive, some systems that are non-dispersive. The advantage of that is that if you have a pattern, then that pattern will be maintained as it propagates. Okay? So that makes it, in geophysical data, that makes it easier to follow features. If they're acting non-dispersively, you can, you can see them moving. If they're dispersing, then they get lost.